Hi everyone, thanks for visiting my channel. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Carol, the Thrifty Chic Housewife. So, we've got a lot of crazy stuff going on in the world right now and I know everyone's staying at home and is looking for fun recipes and um, things to do in their kitchen. So I've put messages out there to you guys both on YouTube and on Facebook asking you for if you had any requests and a number of you have contacted me and said yes I would love to see a quiche recipe or brunch recipes so my next few recipes I do have some canning stuff I'm gonna slide in between but my next few recipes I'm gonna kind of concentrate on brunch um, since you guys seem to be interested in that and also I think it's appropriate timing we have Mother's Day coming up next next month um, this is the end of April so just in a few weeks we're gonna have Mother's Day and I'm not sure how much our circumstances are gonna change by then so we may be making our own Mother's Day um, brunch or breakfast or whatever we may need to treat ourselves so and I know a lot of people like to do Mother's Day brunch so I'm gonna be concentrating on some delicious brunch recipes for you guys but today we're gonna to be concentrating on quiche and I enjoy making quiches if I'm honest I prefer making frittatas over quiches they are similar and I want to talk about some of their similarities um, today just to share some information with you um, the reason why I love frittatas is because they're but they're simpler than a quiche they're crustless and they're both baked um quiche has a crust most of the time you can make crustless quiche um but we're going to make ours today with crust typically it does have a crust quiches have a higher dairy dairy ratio to eggs than do frittatas frittatas have more egg very little if any dairy quiche has more dairy than egg. Um, usually your ratio for quiche is about a half a cup of dairy for every large egg. And then for frittatas, you can use a splash of milk, cream, sour cream, whatever a dairy product you wanna use, but it has, it, its main focus is egg. So a frittata is kind of like a baked omelet, if you will. will um, quiche is like a savory pie so those are kind of the differences but the reason that I love both is because they are a great avenue for cleaning out your fridge any leftover meat or vegetables that you have it's they're a wonderful avenue for kind of using up leftovers so that's one of the reasons that I love them and um, they're delicious eggs are great for you and um, I frequently make them for us on the weekend so anyway back to quiche so for making quiche, you're gonna start with a pie crust. You can use refrigerated if you prefer. I'm using my ne Never Fail pie crust. If you want that recipe, I will link it for you in the description box below. Um, it's in my apple pie video. Um, I should probably do a separate video just on crust, but it, it's not. It's in the apple pie video and it makes four crusts. So I, when I make a batch, I just put the three I'm not using in the freezer and they freeze wonderfully and then you just let them defrost and you always have pie crust on hand but you can certainly make your own use refrigerated whatever you want to do but we need to blind bake it I know some people struggle with quiche if you skip this step you will struggle with it being your crust not being done when your uh, egg mixture is so it can lead to a soggy crust and an undone crust in comparison to your filling. So we need to blind bake it for 15 to 20 minutes, but you wanna go ahead and shape it. For blind baking, you just wanna make sure you prick it all over with a fork. It'll help to keep it from shrinking up. And then what I do is I use a piece of parchment paper and you can use parchment paper or you can use foil. So they gently Put it on top of your crust and then you're going to want to use pie weights or what I use for pie weights is I just use an inexpensive bag of beans but just make sure if you're going to use dried beans that you label them as pie weights so they don't accidentally get cooked um, so I just keep the jar and I just keep using my beans over and over again but like I said you want to make sure you label your jar so that you know they are pie weights and not beans for being eaten I'm not sure how good they'd be after they've been used as a pie weight. So anyway, you want either foil or parchment paper and then just pour in your beans 
or if you're using legit pie weights, that's fine too. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna pop it in the oven for about 15 minutes and then we will remove our beans and we're gonna let it cool and then we'll work on our filling. So you just want it to start to brown. You want it to get a head start in the cooking and it, the edges should be golden brown for you and um, it'll be puffy. So you're gonna wanna bake your pie crust in a 400 degree preheated oven for a 15 to 20 minutes. And I like to bake mine on the very bottom shelf. That way you ensure that the bottom of your crust will be done when your filling is done. So bottom shelf of your oven, 400 degrees, 15, 20 minutes. Okay guys, my pie crust has baked for almost 20 minutes, like 18 minutes. And then I took it out of the oven and I removed my pie weights. And I'm going to go ahead and put it in for five more minutes without the pie weights. I wanna, my edges have started to turn golden brown here, but my bottom, you can tell that it's starting to cook, but it's still a little doughier than I like. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it in for another five minutes without anything in it. And then we'll bring it out and then we'll fill it and put it back in and cook, bake the whole thing off. Okay guys, I baked my pie crust another five minutes and you can tell it's starting to cook and get done in the bottom. And that's what we wanna see. Um, and my edges are nice and golden brown. So now we're ready to put our quiche together. Now, obviously you can pick your flavors and be intentional about making your quiche. As I mentioned earlier, it's a great way to just use up leftovers. So that's what I'm going to do today is I'm gonna use up leftovers. We just had Easter, we had a lovely ham, and we also had roasted asparagus. So I'm taking what I had left over in, with my ham and my asparagus, and then I'm gonna add some cheese. So that's what I'm doing today. Your ratios, um, like I said, for your eggs, you want about a half a cup of um, heavy cream, milk, uh, sour cream, some kind of dairy. Obviously the higher the fat, the creamier and richer it will be. Um, so you want about a half a cup of dairy to each egg. And then for your filling, you're gonna want about a cup of cheese, give or take. And then for your veggies and your, your meat, you want a, a total of about two cups. That's just a general idea. Obviously you can use more, you can use less. That's entirely up to you. So I'm using just what I had left over. The other thing that I want to point out too is you want to make sure whatever fillings you're using, they need to be pre-cooked. So um, if you are in being intentional about it and you're not using leftovers, if you're using onions or garlic or sausage or any kind of meat like that, you need to make sure that it's cooked first. So you could saute whatever ingredients you're using as far as veggies and your meat goes. You just wanna make sure they're cooked first. So if you need to, you can saute them. Mine were already cooked, so I'm skipping the sauteing step. Hopefully that makes sense, you're following me. Um, so I have about one cup of cooked ham, and I'm gonna go ahead and sprinkle that on the bottom. And then to that, I had about a half a cup of my asparagus left over, and I just went ahead and chopped it in small pieces. Roasted veggies are delicious in quiche. They add lots of flavor to your egg. And then on top of that, I'm gonna go ahead and add my cheese. I have about a cup of Swiss and Gruyere that is shredded. So we're gonna go ahead and put about a cup of cheese on top of those ingredients on top of our meat and our veg. And then now for our eggs. I've got two cups of half and half, and I've got four eggs. So that's our one egg to half cup dairy ratio. So we're gonna go ahead and whisk our eggs a little bit. And seasonings, entirely up to you. I'm keeping mine pretty basic today. I'm just going to use about a teaspoon of seasoned salt. If you've watched my channel very long, you know I love seasoned salt. And then I'm also going to use about a half a teaspoon of lemon pepper. I love lemon pepper. It's delicious in eggs, great with roasted veggies. But you could use just salt and pepper. You could use some fresh herbs. You could use dried herbs, just whatever you like. I'm gonna give that a nice whisk. 
and then we're going to go ahead and add our half and half and whisk all that together until it's nice and combined. The more you whisk it, the fluffier it'll be. Okay, that's good. So we're going to take our custard mixture and just pour that down over the top. And I did reduce the heat on my oven from 400 to 375. So we're going to pop it in the oven for 30 to 45 minutes. You, it'll just depend on how your oven bakes. You just want to, you want a knife inserted in the center of it. You want the knife to come out clean. So I'm going to go ahead and pop it in the oven, get it cooking, and then I will bring you back. We are all done. My quiche baked for about 45 minutes. You just, like I said, want to check it by inserting a knife in the middle of it and it should come out pretty clean. But I want to say that you don't want to take it too far. You don't want to overly done either because um, then it's not light and fluffy uh, like we like. So just want to keep an eye on it. When it starts getting close, keep checking it and just adding one minute increments until it's done the way you want it. And then I let it sit for about 15 minutes. You're gonna to wanna to let it sit 15 to 20 minutes before you cut into it. And here we are. How beautiful is that? Light and fluffy. Get under it so you can see. The crust is perfectly done. Nice and golden brown. Nice and flaky. Just gorgeous. Just the perfect ratio of fillings to your custard. Mm -mm. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention is you might want to use a pie shield if you don't want yours to get too done. I like mine pretty golden, deep golden brown. Um, so if you don't, make sure you use a pie shield. But anyway, I think it's time to taste it. It's so fluffy, creamy, cheesy. You see the bottom crust, how it's nice and done. Mm. Just delicious. That custard is so creamy and so good. And I, in my opinion, that's the perfect amount of veg and meat. It's just the perfect ratio. So, so good. Nice, tender, flaky crust perfectly cheesy and just so delicious. So I hope you'll give it a try. Like I said, it's a great way to use up leftover veggies and meat that you have sitting around in your fridge. Make a whole new meal out of it. Perfect for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. It's so good. Just a couple of things. If you don't want the crust, you can just pour this into a um, baking dish or into a pie plate. I would just grease it really well, either butter it or spray it really well with cooking spray. And you can just bake it off that way. Save yourself some carbs and some calories. If you prefer to have a crustless quiche, that's the way to do it. And you can also store this for several days in the refrigerator. It keeps very well in the fridge. And then I just pop it in the microwave for about a minute or so until it's nice and warm again. So it will store very nicely for you in the refrigerator for several days. I, to be honest with you, I haven't tried, about, tried freezing, so I don't know about freezing it. I'm sure it would be fine but I've not personally tried it, so there's that. Anyway, I hope you'll give it a try. If you have any questions or comments for me, leave them in the comment section. Like, subscribe, and share, and I will see you next time. Have a great day, guys.